Hi guys, welcome to Spray Gunner's video channel and today I have a special guest here. His name is Garcia and he's doing the fishing lures, right? Fishing lures. You're, you're running this uh, famous Facebook group, yeah, Brotherhood. Brotherhood of Cross Custom Crankbait Painting. Yeah, some popular stuff there. Um, and today we're going to have less than basically for me, uh, first time painting uh, fishing lures. This for, you, for those of you who are trying to get in this kind of industry and uh, do it by yourself. So we're going to show what you need for start, what you need and uh, you know, all the technical basics, right? So what do we okay. start with? I got my start airbrush with, ready. Yeah, start, start with a blank lure okay. and ah. tape off the bill so you don't get anything on the bill, which we mm -hmm. already did that. Mm -hmm. And we got to paint, we're going to paint a sardine. So the whole thing has got to be sprayed white as your base coat. Okay. So just put some in there and start spraying. Great. Make sure you get in the back hmm. and underneath the chin too. Yeah. And in the back of the eyeball. Yeah, that's what I missed. That's a good point. And then just make sure it's all covered. And then we're gonna heat set it with the blow gun. I do have one of this ready. Oh it's not working for me good. Put it too this one industrial, yeah. so I don't yeah, get it too high. Yeah, you gotta. Okay. So don't put it right on it because you'll melt the paint mm -hmm. and you'll melt the bait. You're just heating it up till you see the shine sort of get dull. Yeah. A hair dryer works much better than a heat gun because this gets really, really hot. Oh, we use this for it. Packaging here, so yeah. <laughs> don't use hair dryer. Yeah. You see how it's getting dull? Mm -hmm. So, when it gets dull, it's pretty much dry. That's it, right there. Oh, nice. I'm getting this mine. Put on the high setting. Yeah. Is yours still tacky? A little bit. Yeah. Should you give it to mom? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know what kind of paint it is, so. <laughs> well, that's for the best paint for now. That's should, all should, I can should, tell you. Okay. But it's something new. We'll, we'll okay. get ready to roll out on the market. But it needs so to be dry. To, it needs to be dry to the touch. Okay. So give it a little bit some more. Uh, Feel dryer? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's pretty good. Give me that hair dryer. This one's still tacky. Not better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Put it down. Okay. Now we're gonna take a loofah, shower loofah, and you're just gonna put it over it and stretch it out so you see the scales open up. Mm -hmm. And then we can tape it because we don't have any clips. So let's just tape the tip in the back. I'm gonna cheat and use the clip in the front. And we just stretch it out. So all you're doing is pulling it up against the lure and stretching it out. Like that won't work at all. The paint will get under it. So you want to pull it nice and tight. Not too tight so these all look different. 
so they look about uniform and even. Right about there. Yeah, normally you do this with clips. So I'll just hold mine like that and spray it. Okay, I'm going to have to change the color. So the hard part is we're going to have to hold this on here somehow. Let me open this first. It's still closed. On the bill part, mm -hmm. pull it nice and tight against the body. Try it in here. Just note this. Okay, I'm going to go in this side. Right? <laughs> there you go. Okay, is it better? Yeah. You can put some tape on you got to get that tape off there because the paint's going to go down the side a little bit. Okay. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. All right, let's try it. Okay. So. You're going to spray along the top half for the bait. Just light coat. You'll see it start to change color. Turn it on the side so you're spraying on the top but a little bit down the side. So you're on an angle, you're not actually mm -hmm. straight with the load. If you spray on an angle, it'll go down the sides a little bit. You can do the same on the other side by turning your lure a little bit. Try to get this color the same as that side. Sometimes one side's lighter than the other. Too light, thin coat. And we don't worry about the face yet. You can get around the eyes if you want. Now I got the eyes and a little bit on the other side. We gotta heat set that. Can I try this? Yeah. We gotta heat set that. Okay, here's a gun. Clips. <laughs> Clips make a big difference. change colors. Ready. So we start on the top with the sepia, just back and forth, and you're just darkening it very little. And we're only going not where we went down here, we're going staying up a little bit higher. Now the angle is this way, so you're putting the, the paint the, in this direction, so you, it only hits so far on the body. Heat set it and then we take off the scale mask. Hmm. Nice. Nice. 
going to take that same sepia and we're going to darken along the top here with no scale mask. So it blends it in just like that. Just along the top. Light coats. Shoot it that way, you can mm -hmm. get the belly all mm -hmm. looked up. Here. So just kind of shoot that, and then shoot the nose underneath the nose. Around the eyes. Okay. Like that. Mm -hmm. Now let's heat that, see, heat set that. Now we're going to take some sepia and you're going to spray, you wrinkle up a paper towel so it's all wrinkly and you're going to take the sepia and you're going to spray the towel. Okay. So all you're doing is putting a lot of paint on the towel. Get it nice and wet. Then you're going to just dab it on the road, around the face, like that. Get it nice and wet. If you ever look at a sardine, it's got that mm. darkness around the face. That's it. We heat, that, heat set that, and then we're going to change the black, and we're going to do the dots. Just gonna spray the belly. And you're gonna come up the sides a little bit, stay away from the gill plate. So we got the fastback green to put on the back and we got the three dots or the six dots or five dots or whatever you want to put along the side and then it gets clear coated. Nice. The funny part is just as much paint end up on your fingers as it does mm -hmm. on the lure. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the, where's the fastback?
fast back we're just putting straight on the back. Mm -hmm. We did the sepia on the back, but that was to blend in the scales. Mm -hmm. This is just going on the back. That's okay. it. Spray it straight on the back. in front of the eye. And that's it. We set that. It's right there in the middle. Okay. We switch out and we do black. And those are going to be dots that are along the side here. All right. Five, six, how many ever dots you want to put on there. Let's get it yeah, that fastback green just looks good on everything. Anything that's green because the way it reflects light. And when you put the clear coat on it, it just pops, mm -hmm. it gives it a depth. So we're gonna try to finish with those afterwards. Yeah. What do you suggest, what I'll say, what depth? How far uh, from the coast? That all depends. I mean, you can catch snook with these, you can catch anything that's out there. That, but everything eats sardines. Mm -hmm. Everything eats greenback. So whatever is near where you throw it, mm -hmm. you're gonna get bit. So, I mean, you can go out far if you want, or you can go close in. All right, thank you. Shake that up. It's on the same thing. <laughs> I only need a little bit. <laughs> and doing this, it's easier to practice. And you just all you're doing is a dot. So that clean dog get yourself steady. And you're doing a dot. Just like that. If it doesn't want to come out, give it some spray. Do the same on the other side. <laughs> make a big difference. The lure just doesn't look right without the eyes. That's pretty much it. Two eyes, one each side. Let me take the tape off. 
and this can be dipped in KBS or clear coated with a uh, epoxy. So you're gonna spray clear coating? Mm -hmm. No. No. I normally dip it in KBS. You dip the whole layer in KBS mm -hmm. and you let it hang and sit for okay. 24 hours. Okay. Or you can take a brush or you can spray it. It depends if you have the gun to spray clear coat mm -hmm. on it. Either way. But normally I dip it in KBS. Then you can also epoxy it. Put it on with a brush. So you're going to put that in an airbrush or a cup gun? Uh, probably going to use the PC270 with a trigger brush with a flat spray. So okay. it's kind of between an airbrush and a spray gun. Okay. So we have to have something to hold it. Okay. So you can spray the bill and everything, mm -hmm. the whole thing. So, yep, I've never sprayed a clear coat on a layer. Okay. Now, before we start spraying, let's get that box and put two holes in it so we can rest them in there okay. when they're done. All right, guys, we're going to apply some clear coats and we're using this uh, no name brand by a spray gunner. So this is pretty good, made in Europe stuff and it should work just fine. I know some, some people use it already for uh, lures. We have uh, reviews on the website saying this works pretty good. Never tried it myself, but it's a straw. Okay guys, so um, we have the first coat of the clear. Which you first time sprayed on, right? Yeah, first time spraying through an airbrush. <laughs> uh, not gonna take, not gonna make a second and third, which I suggest doing at yeah. least a second coat, just yeah. because we're in the office right now and it's, uh, it's take too much time to get everything out of here. It's better to do it in your garage. So we have a spray bottle in the back there, but we're gonna go and finish it after we shoot this video. But basically, that's it. I mean, I use a small compressor for everything, but the clear coat for clear coat gun 0.5, you'll need something bigger than this little guy. For the rest of the stuff, actually, this, I think yeah. this is mine, right? Yeah, no, it's yours. This is mine. So for the rest of the stuff, this little compressor with a small air tank to prevent the possession. That's, yeah. I mean, that's for me, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's plenty. Yeah, plenty. And that's like seventy-nine dollars. And actually, we went out for a cigarette while it was, yeah, yeah clean here. And that's what we're talking about. So you're suggesting buying a good airbrush, right? I yeah. would spend the money. I would spend a couple hundred dollars on an airbrush because that's the tool you use the most. You can go cheaper on the paints and cheaper on the compressor, but the airbrush is the one that does all the work. So, my opinion, get a good airbrush, skimp on everything else. When you get used to it and you start to like it, then you still have a good airbrush. All you need to do is get a better compressor and then choose the paints that you like to use. Um, thin paints work good through an airbrush, thick paints, you might have to thin them sometimes depending on your needle size of your airbrush so I recommend a good airbrush if you're just beginning and then as you go on you can get a better air compressor you can get better paints but go with a good airbrush that's actually I'm surprised to hear it because it's my politics that's why we don't have any Chinese airbrushes we don't have any cheap uh, airbrushes but we just broke all this compressor line which is six models from China because yeah that's the point you're getting good airbrush which we have the Badger, GSI Creos, Hard and Stem, there's plenty to choose from Sparmax. They're all good at some point, you know, some people like Badger, I understand them why they spray real good. I prefer Japanese or Hard and Stem, some people like the Sparmax airbrushes, I don't I what is there in the market as well. But yeah, the compressors are here, and what else, what do you suggest for new guys to pick up? First lures, um, yeah, what kind of colors? Just like one that I use a lot is this teal and purple flare. From Auto Air. This fastback green is a must, and the sepia is a must. You do need white, you need black, you need your um, basic color set. You can always mix colors, but certain colors like the lime green is a must. You don't need uh, colors that are like, I don't know, real bright. Fluorescent colors fade, a lot of them are not color fast, so just get a basic color set, your regular opaque colors, get some flare colors, 
and transparency. Transparents work good on everything, whether you're doing a big lure, a small lure, whether you're doing, um, I don't know, thin coats. Everything on lures is layers. You want to do layers. The people that just spray it on one thick coat, you'll never get anywhere. So a good airbrush, thin colors, and you can always mix colors, but the fastback green is a must and the sepia is a must. Anything else, it's up to you. But you need white and black. That's it. You said you like this white, right? Yes, I the like white, that white. White bottle of white. That bottle of white sprays. I normally use the golden, um, the golden titanium white, and that sprays really good compared to that. So I don't know what it is. He won't tell me. I, I'm gonna give you this bottle. Actually, it, to give. it goes on very smooth, very even, and. It's, it's a nice to be white. in the market in a few it's a months. Nice so it's, we're not talking about it yet, but it's going to be in the market in a few months. I'm going to give you this bottle so you can, yeah. uh, you can test right. it some more. This well, I guess, uh, I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, you can comment and we'll respond. We'll ask Garcia and uh, I think you already joined his uh, Facebook group, The Brotherhood. How do you call it? Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting. Yeah, make sure you're in this group because there's a lot of, uh, lot of information there. People share everything. There's an open group where you can uh, post your work. You can see what others do and how they do it. Yeah, it's a learning page. It's not about selling. It's about teaching people how to paint lures and where to get supplies. That's all it is. All right, guys. Hope it was helpful. Have a good day. See you.